is also fun to collage and you can just use the regular PVA glue and see how I put it on in strips. So it's not here, oh, but it's here. Wow. Right. And then I was able to kind of like go over it. Right. And then you have also like a little bit of separation. And then this is just uh, pan the pan pastels, which are these. And ironically, like I got this whole box of pastels for free. Hold on. Um, the pastels. Wait, oh look at these goodness. colors though. Wait, I'm, it's like amazing. It's like to die for. What? I oh know. my gosh. I know. I think I think I tried to count them last night, but I think there's like 24 in each row times three rows of these colors. And, and you the, got that for free? Yes, I got it in the giveaway box at the art center. I know. That's like, a good giveaway. <laughs> I know, but these go really, really, really well onto um, photo paper, inkjet paper, and uh, as long as there's no, as long as there's no like glossiness or shine to the paper, these work perfectly. Oh, good thing you said, you mentioned that. Ooh, oh, before I forget, can you record for me? I did. Please? Started. Oh, thank you. Because it's funny you mentioned that I had some previous um, prints mm -hmm. after our last class. Yeah. I was playing with this image. Oh, yeah, I love it. And see how it's actually a metallic glossy paper. Oh, okay. So when I did the sandpaper, sanding it, it gave it such an awesome look. Yeah. And now that you mentioned not to use those on this type of paper, yeah, I'm really happy you said that. Yeah, I don't use I don't use the pastels. I, I always try to think about like um, surf surfaces that are gonna um, get along. Absorb. Yeah, mm. get yeah. So a paper that has like a tooth, you know, a, a paper that's mostly pulp and has like some type of tooth is going to be able to react to. Um, Pastels. Pastels are really, I always like to think of them as like eye makeup. You know, they're like makeup because they're basically okay. like a finely ground powder, right? So really understanding each of your art materials is important. Like colored pencils are pressed into like condensed pigments yes, and they yes. have a little bit of, um, I, I don't know, they have a chemical in them or something that keeps them that hard, that hardens them and makes them like, right? But the other material that I like, um, I mean, this is my art material table, but the other material that I like besides the pan pastels is, are these, and these are watercolors. Did we talk about watercolors last week? Briefly. Okay, so let's go back. Oh, you don't have your encaustic gesso yet. No. Okay, I'm... but I might do this over the weekend. And one of the things that I do is that the encaustic gesso can be tinted. So that means that you can add a color, watercolor, mm. I, not these, but you could add um, the tube water. These are tube watercolors. Oh. So you can add a watercolor tint to the encaustic gesso. So like, for example, do you know what uh, split toning is? Yes. Yeah, so like you can add a pinkish or a green on top. Is that what you mean? Right. So, yeah. Split toning just means that you have um, two two tones in the image. So it could be whatever two tones that you wanted. It could be silver and gold. It could be copper and blue. It can be black, you know, gray and brown. So it's just it's just split toning. Um, there's a really famous artist. I can show him to you. Uh, his name is Phil Borges, mm -hmm. and he does split toning. Um, I'll show you his work. Grab my pencil. And then there's a lot of artists that do um, what I call um, hand color hand coloring, right? So in a way, you know, we need to sort of establish how what type of, of uh, painter we are with 
you know, the photos. And I don't, I don't even think that I could specify what type of painter I am because like, I love that super, super minimalistic, just a tiny little bit of color on a black and white, as much as I love like a very heavily painted encaustic piece, right? It, it's just, and, and you can like both too. I mean, I, I wouldn't ever ask an, uh, I would never ask an artist to choose only one or say, but some people do that. Some people like they choose one thing that they like and then they just, they only do just that do thing. that, yeah. Yeah, and that, I, to I totally respect that and get that, but I I'm not that way. Like that's just never been- uh, Your style. My style, my style is, and I, and even in an exhibition, like I like to hang, hang artworks together that are like, you know, super busy. Like this is like, this would be an example. This is like super simple, right? So gorgeous. Right. It's just so simple. It's just watercolor and a little bit of watercolor crayon. Oh my goodness. I thought that was going to be that wax just. On no, the no, no, there's like, no, there's like nothing on here. But then like wow. this one, this one has like a lot, like a lot of wax, right? Oh. Right. So this Ooh, is- Oh, I love that. I, I know. And, and you know, what's funny is honestly, Erica, this one sat here for like three months and I hated it. But then like the other day, I just, I finally like it clicked. It, I was just like, oh, I, wait, I can fix that. Like, I know, like, I see it. Like, let me like fix it. So sometimes too, like the images, I think sort of speak to you if you allow that, um, if you allow, create that space, right? Mm -hmm. For, and, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to be um, in the moment you, unfortunately, like it doesn't always happen in the moment that you want it to happen. <laughs> Walking away from it. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like you need that space or time out or whatever to um get it right you need to like yeah let it go walk away and then regroup it right come back to it kind of like editing <laughs> well to totally and you know what every i don't know if you've ever noticed but like i'll edit something and then i'll i'll be like oh i was in a i must have been in like a really bad mood or whatever when i edited that because then when i go back and i, I was like wait that's a good, wait, like, I missed a lot. Like that wasn't that bad. Like bad. that's good, mm -hmm. like, right. You're like, wait, why didn't I pick that one? <laughs> I know it's funny how, well, we can be very critical. Artists, artists can be very hard on, you know, we can be hard on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And um, we also have, you know, right brain, right brain, left brain conversations happening I saw on your um, workspace regular watercolors that kids use yeah yeah oh, uh, I, okay I, mean, I teach kids too but why not uh yeah I have I have these yeah I have I mean yeah because why not I mean I have these and you can add that to the wax no you only add no photo paper watercolors have to go directly on the paper or in the gesso watercolors on the paper or in the gesso and i can actually quickly demonstrate both to you right now if you want me to and then um uh, then they dry and then the wax can go right over the watercolors okay yep dry then then wax okay. like so uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, the wax. So if I'm adding the gesso and the watercolors, the wax would be the last thing to go on top. If you're adding the gesso and the watercolors, it would go print, gesso, watercolor, or watercolor, gesso, wax. Yep. Okay. And okay. then lots of things can go on the wax. Oh, okay. So lots of things can go on the wax. Uh, encaustic paint can go on the wax. Uh, pig, any type of oil paint can go on the wax. Any any type of oil paint. Okay. Um, and 
uh, pigment sticks can go on the wax and pan pastels can go on the wax. Uh, also, those um, <clears throat> and that's what we can talk about today. So, okay. when we left each other um, last Sunday, last weekend, did you? We had I had waxed um, just with wax medium, right, on a photo. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you had also glued. We had glued something. Yes. Okay, so we glued this one. Perfect. Um, I waxed a few and it was a learning process, which I'm really happy I did it. Yep. I waxed it on um, regular hail. I always forget how to say it. Hanamule. Ha Hanamule. Ha Hanamule. <laughs> you would think I would know. No, um, I would, no, ha, ha, no. It's like ha. It's like H A H A H ha and then Nemule. <laughs> on the mule <laughs> on the mule you got it i i did this one i um sand i sanded the i added the texture by sanding the curtains mm -hmm. and the floor okay. and i waxed that and i waxed these two metallic shiny the same image a right. little bit different okay i waxed these okay just to play with it and i i learned that i didn't have my wax hot enough your wax wasn't hot enough. So you saw clumps in it or bunches? And and immediately as, as soon as I applied it, it dried like that fast. Cooled. It cooled instantly. So it didn't mm -hmm. it didn't move. It didn't allow it, you to brush it and it didn't move. Mm -hmm. So okay. I went back with the gun and I put the gun to it a little bit. Okay. And what was the temperature? Do you remember? It was at 200 Good. and I raised it. That your 200 should be fine. I mean, okay. I'm at 200. I don't, um, what type of pan are you melting it in? Um, let me show you. And because, okay, so the thick, like I use these. And I noticed that I think I'm gonna have to do that because I have so, the actual. So what's good about these is that they're thin so that the actual, like the actual pan wall is thin. So it's quickly conducting the heat, right? It's quickly mm -hmm. melting and staying melted. It's not resisting. Um, this is what I'm using. I don't want to burn myself, so I'm grabbing something. <laughs> that's okay. No, yes. Or or move the <clears throat> computer or move the video so I can see your palette. You want to? Oh, it's below you. Yeah. Okay. It's right here. The thicker one. Okay. I mean that that should be fine okay. that that really should be fine okay so a couple things about that too is if you feel like your wax isn't moving enough you have a heat gun right mm -hmm. yes. you can you can do something you can preheat the paper oh so the idea of um preheating just allows you to um get more more movement, right? More okay. um, swipe, like more swiping. Yeah. <laughs> because because if the paper's cool, or if you're like in air conditioning, or you have anything like that, then your um, wax is going to come out of the pan, even if it's the right temperature. It's going to come out and go ah, like ah. yeah. And that's another thing that happened. I was in the front room, and we were in a heat wave last weekend. And yeah. the AC was on. Right. So it didn't have anything to do with your palate temperature. It had to do with uh, your air temperature. So if your okay. air temperature is like 60 degrees and you're taking your wax from 200 to 60, it's going to have a panic attack. Okay. It's going to just completely freak out. And so what you're going to need to do if you're going to work in that environment is you're going to need to preheat your paper okay. or board. Okay. Which is easy. We can talk about that today. Okay. And then you take the heat gun and you put it on there. Um, and then you um you put it on there and then you start and then you wipe and then you heat it and then you wipe, then you brush. And that's okay. really too. So okay, so cold and hot. Hot should give you smooth texture and cooling should give you rough texture. Sure. Okay. 
Okay, and then today what we can also talk about is adding more texture. So we could talk about stencils or lace. Do you have any of those things? Yes, yes. Okay, and then we'll talk about um, adding color. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna get, um, I'm gonna grab a, uh, I'm gonna grab a couple texture making tools. So I'm gonna grab uh, a stencil, some lace and some string. Do you have all three of those things? Yes. Okay, and then um, I'll grab a print and I'll have wax medium. Now, did you get any encaustic paints? Did you get any sticks? Please. Those, okay, so those are pigment sticks. Those are not oh, encaustics, but we can, no, they're fine. We'll use them. Okay, okay. The pay, the sticks are also arrives tonight at 9 p.m. <laughs> oh, okay, so you did buy some of them. Yeah, okay, yes. that's fine. No, it's fine. And I know, I mean, I feel for all of these delivery services that are like everyone's depend, nobody wants to go anywhere. Everyone's depending on them to bring stuff to their house. It's like, Okay. Actually, the art store ran out of I'm sure. the things that I ordered on Amazon. They're like, yeah, we have it in San Diego. I'm not driving to San Diego. Well, but it makes sense, right? Because people yeah. are stuck at home. I mean, mm-hmm. and, you know, make, you know, wanting to be Do stuff. Stay, stay busy. Yeah. Stay productive or alive or whatever, you know. Stay sane. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's actually happening, but we're trying. No. Know- I mean, theoretically, yeah, but I don't know. I have my doubts some days. Okay, hang on one second. I'm just gonna grab a couple of things. I'll be right back. Sure. Oh, wait, I was trying to do that. Have fun. She's not there. Look at her shop. So this is just all the stuff she's grabbing, like the stuff that I have. She's in, and it was the AC, the the quick temperature. The glass was cold. The air was cold. She was like, "No, you were at the right temperature. It was just, it went into complete shock." <laughs> have a good rest. Okay, bye. Okay, so I have um, I picked up a couple things. So one is I have this. You know what this is, right? <gasps> yes, that's from the fruit when you or the lemons or the avocado. Right. And then this is cool. This is like um like a you know this is like a found object thing that I bought you know at a, at an antique store or thrift store, um. To so it's a roll of lace, right? But it's really pretty. Hmm. Okay. And then this is also stuff that you find like Salvation Army or whatever. So zigzags. This is also really cool. Um. And I just need a pair of scissors. And then this is actual, like, this is a piece of lace. So this lace has already been waxed, right? So, but it's good. Yeah. It just means that it has wax in it. Mm-hmm. So if I wanted to clean it, I would just lay it on the palette. So here's, here's like my palette, right? So if you want to clean it, you just literally like lay it down. Oh. And you can just let the wax melt off of it. And then you can take a paper towel and just like clean it, right? So this is also how I clean my palette. So, right, so if I have, you know, my palette gets messy, I just take a paper towel. Uh, Okay. Right, and clean it. So I can just kind of clean this area, which will loosen, the heat will just, this is like the most gentle way. Also with the plastic stencils, 
my stencils get so messy. So you can do, there's two things that clean wax, right? Heat, or now you know about the other thing that cleans wax or is, stiffens it is cold, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of equally affected. It's, it's definitely like a, a lukewarm temperature material, like, right? It likes things like right there in the middle. It likes, mm -hmm. okay. So now this is like nice and clean, you see? Oh yes, it's, oh, it's perfect. It's, it's beautiful. Okay, so that one's ready. This one's ready. Okay, so I have, um, I have wax medium in my in my little pots, right? This one, I'm actually trying to clean these out. So these are a little bit dirty because I mix, I clean my brushes, right? So like these are all my brushes. We kind of talked about brushes a little bit last time, right? Mm, I don't. Oh, okay. briefly, briefly. Okay, so we can talk about them again. Like I I could talk about brushes all day because. I feel like every brush has like a different um, effect. A lot like pens. Have you ever done any like um, mar marker work or like people that draw or illustrators, they buy like all different size pen tips, right? Mm -hmm. So they buy like super fine pen tips and then they do super wide. So, so this one is, I'm just gonna try to make myself. I don't know why, but lately, my it won't let me make myself the the spotlight. primary. Yeah. Um, if you pin, Full are screen. you pinning yourself? Uh, hold on. Now I'm like, yeah. Okay. So. So I like a lot of different size brushes, right? So this is like a two inch pocket. I'm gonna move this light too. Hang on one second. Okay. I have so much fun right now. Hold on. Is that? Uh, uh, that looks so much better, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on, I'm a photographer, right? I should know how to light this. <laughs> okay, so you need less of, uh, you want more. I do. Okay, so that should be good. All right, so I'm gonna put the print here and I have all these art supplies over here. Okay, so I use these, I use these mud, I call them mud pots. And so what happens is that if I use colors in my wax, I put them back in the mud. So I keep my mm. mat wax medium clean. So I might have two trays, right? Okay. One one with wax medium and one with what I call mud. Now, okay. the thing about the mud is that you can totally paint with it, but it's just not perfectly clean. So it has like a hue or a cast. Like right now, this mud is a little bit um, beigey, but I can test it. I like to keep like a scrap of white paper. Um, and sometimes I think it's really nice to mix color with dirty wax. And the reason I like to mix color with dirty wax is I feel like it just softens the color, right? Because it's gonna just dull it down a little bit. Okay, so this is what my mud looks like, right? This is the color of my mud, mm. right? Super pretty, super pretty color, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not bright white but not brown, not totally opaque, semi-translucent. And like I think a just a really, really nice mid-tone, uh, very, very light coffee color, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, 
So now I know that that's my mud. And then over here in this tray, I should have clear, cleaner wax medium, which is going to go on like this. So you can definitely see the difference, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what I try to do. I always try to have one tray wax medium, one tray mud. Okay. So if I get my brush dirty with paint, it doesn't go back in the wax medium. It goes into the mud, right? Okay. And mm -hmm. then I can clean it. So to clean a brush, to clean a brush, I take a paper towel, I put it in the mud, I lightly, like I, I tap it, on, wipe it on the side, let most of the wax come out into the mud, and then I brush it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And then I go like this. I fold, it's kind of, I fold it and I squeeze it. I squeeze it. Like makeup brushes. <laughs> yep. And now I should be clean. So I can go back in the clean and it should be clean. And voila, it's clean. Ah, nice. Okay. 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 So dirty brushes go in the mud, right? Mud. And if you want to, you could take a Sharpie, like because you're learning, you could take a Sharpie and you could say mud, or you could have two different pans, or you could put like um, duct tape on the mud one. I mean, there's just something to mark it as mud. Okay. Okay. And I, I, trust me, I talk about this a lot because I make a lot of mud, like, um, like this is mud. It's, it's gray, right? But what yeah. happens is look, I can take this aluminum pan and I can see, keep my mud. So technically I can pull this out of this pan. Oh, wow. And now I can paint with this. Ah, right. So I do it sometimes too um, with a, a cupcake, uh, a cupcake tray. Oh, uh, okay. And, and you I have put, individual ones. Yeah, I make different colors. And then when it hardens, I can pop them out and I can paint with this. So if I want it, this is gray, right? Gray and black. So if I wanted to paint with this, I just put it on the hot plate. Look, and I'm never gonna waste this paint, right? So look, now I have what, look, I have black paint, look. Oh my God, that's genius. Right? I love it. Right, <laughs> right. And then remember, how do I paint, how do I clean the brush? So I tap it off, right? Excess, mm -hmm. Excess could go, and these paper towels, you can keep them, you know, they're, and you've seen like the reusable wax cloths, right? Mm -mm. Well, they're selling like wax cloths for food pre preservation now. So you can reuse this wax cloth to clean your brush. But like, look how beautiful even like the wax is on the paper towel. I mean, <laughs> right? Okay, so now I can go into the mud, right? Swish this brush around a little bit. Now my mud is getting a little bit darker right? Because I put that darker color in there. I'm going to tap it off and then I'm going to wipe it out, right? Perfect. Does that make sense? Okay. And now yes. I can go back to where? Now I can go back to, back to your main wax, wax medium, right? My wax mm -hmm. medium and look like clean. Wow. Okay. So I recommend keeping a lot of extra, like don't, like now, like don't throw away extra borders or white paper, right? Because it's really good to have it around to test mm -hmm. what color you're making, right? Also your paper towels, right? For cleaning purposes. And look, I could totally be neat about it. Like I can, you know, refold this one up, right? And keep that here. Like this one too, like I don't need to throw it away. I'm going to keep it. It's just wax. Okay. So these are all good paper towels. And then this, now I could reuse the tin and I have, I made my own paint. I made my own paint by just what I had put in here with uh, a, a using black and making mud. So I made my own paint. So I can put this over in my paint pile. I'll show you a couple other These are some other muds that I made, right? So these are some other muds that I made. This is my mud, this mm -hmm. is my mud, right? And this is my mud. So 
like these colors are super translucent, but would look beautiful um, just if I melted them down a little bit, yeah. just a little bit. So they're going to be very translucent, like light green. And I can green. show you, mm -hmm. I can show you what color they are, right? By putting them on white, you can see what color they are. Ooh. So they're super translucent, like light green. Just a tint, yeah. Yep, just a tint. So I always like to keep my, and these I made, the, these are mine. I made them from stuff in my studio. And it's nice to kind of like, get away from like all your store-bought colors mm -hmm. and you know start finding your own sort of language and color did that just fall i think that just fell hold on yeah it did move a little bit when you walked away yeah it fell okay all right so um do you want me to go over brushes again i mean really no it's perfect it the ones good. with the long handles you know are the hockey brushes right Yes, it's H A K E. They're hockey brushes, and they come half inch, one inch, one and a half inch, two inches, two and a half inches, three. Right? Mm -hmm. I think the biggest hockey brush. I mean, honestly, I think if you looked hard enough, you could probably find like an eight inch hockey brush. I don't. Or a big print. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. If you were going to use an eight inch hockey brush, you'd probably be using like a huge you know, you'd be painting on a very big panel, mm -hmm. you know, and you'd maybe we would want to be going smooth. And guess what? You'd be using a lot of wax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because like you wouldn't be in a, you wouldn't be in a little loaf pan like this. You would be in like, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah big like sauce pan. <laughs> yeah. Like a turkey, like a turkey pan <laughs> or yeah, like a stew, like a, yeah, like a, okay. A soup pot. Okay. So I'm going to do, um, uh, since you don't have your gesso yet, do you want me to focus on wax today or do you want me to show you gesso stuff too? Um, if we have time, both. Oh, I, I like what you said about this, using this um, paper to, if we were to cut it up and layer it. Okay. That, uh, you want me to collage with the freezer paper? Yeah. Can okay. I use this wax paper or not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So and I do gonna... have some wax. I mean, some lace and stuff I found around my. Okay. Well, let's do the paper. Okay. I mean, um, let's do the paper first and then we have to let that dry anyway. Okay. Okay. So um i'm gonna do the paper on the darker image so this is like a still life this is like some of the work i'm going to show tomorrow okay. is like my still life stuff that i do in my studio so during covid um because i couldn't photograph people i started doing one-on-ones with my dresses and so mm. i would go and it was actually really fun so i would go around the neighborhood with clippers early in the morning and i would steal people's flowers <laughs> <laughs> no, I know it sounds terrible, but I wouldn't. No, steal, but it's good. No, no, I know, but I wouldn't steal like enough for them to notice. Right. You know what I mean? And most of them were like trees or big bushes. It wasn't like one little flower in a, in a pot and I came by. Yeah. And like, it was more like, it was more like, um, yeah. so anyway, like cherry blossoms. And I also went to the park. So I figured like, okay, they, it was. You're helping fun. them. <laughs> right. I was, yeah, right. I was pruning for them. Right. Exactly. Okay. So, um, PVA glue, right. And this is, um, not, this is not, um, whatchamacallit. This is not wax paper. This is deli paper. Oh, okay. So I can wait, hang on. Let me grab the box. It's, um, Yes. For whatever reason, it's called dry, dry wax paper. So I think it's more for like sandwich wrapping mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. Okay. So you could take the paper and I mean, and look, so this is like stain. This is it stain too, like, right? So you could mm. definitely like paint it with watercolors or tea stain it, but like, that's pretty beautiful. Yeah. 
I mean, just that's that gorgeous. Slight, yeah, just that slight. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm super romantic about anything that's like age looking or. Yes, I'm slightly. a fan of your letters that you did. Oh and my God, yes, on. slightly. Right. So the first thing I do is like, I kind of like look at it like this, you know, and I don't see a lot of the photo through here. So I don't want to just cover it. Um, but I think what I'll do is I'll strip it, right? So I'll tear it. And then I'm going to use the glue. And then maybe you want to like arrange it like where you see fit. And a lot of times it's like from the outside in. So I think about things I know about photography, like um, depth of field mm -hmm. and tilt shift, right? So that things are like fuzzy on the outside and sharp in the middle or sharp in the middle, right? Yeah, fuzzy on the outside, sharp in the middle or fuzzy on the inside and sharp on the outside, right? But like, where else might this look good? Like this in this empty space, right? Or right in here. And I can just kind of like, like just kind of like lay it out. All right. And then I should have a brush. I'm gonna go just grab a paintbrush. Okay. Um, So I collect like a lot of brushes in my studio of all different sizes that I don't use in wax, right? So these are like two of those brushes. Um, and I can just, you can pour the wax out into a tray or you can just, and I don't, I just went on this side. I don't really think there's a right side and a wrong side. Right, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna flip it over though. So I'm just gonna put the glue right on the wax paper. And then I'm gonna put it on the, and then I can definitely, after this dries, Erica, I can definitely put wax on okay. top of this. Does that make sense? Yes. So, but only after it dries, like let these layers, you know, yeah. yeah, let them like give them 24 hours to okay. think of, think about it. <laughs> it's a relationship. <laughs> yeah. You guys got it. Yeah. You guys got to think about it. Figure right. it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm doing right. But look how pretty that is. And, you know, it might dry a little bit more, um, Oh my God, it's beautiful. And it might dry a little bit more translucent than it is here. That's right? gorgeous. Gorgeous, right? Just gorgeous. Okay, oh. so. And I like, like, I'm kind of like framing this a little bit. I like the trick that you taught me last week of crinkling yeah crinkling. and add, adding the texture to this wax yeah that's i'm gonna do that tomorrow yeah and you can crinkle so everything is crink, crinkleable crinkleable so even your um even your well your wax itself even any of these papers right um what else yeah almost anything that you could put Anything that you can manipulate, manipulate it. I mean, that's my rule. You know, if you can move it, move it. If you can shake it, shake it, right? If you can uh, crack it, wrinkle it, you know, and guess what? Even, and like, so here too, like, as I'm laying it down, Erica, if I'm deciding that I want it more crinkly, I can push it together. Ooh, yes. Right? Hey, yes. So I can push it together and crinkle it more, right? And so especially like here where the dress is, you know, like I, and also I'm thinking too now about kind of going outside, outside the line, right? So I'm breaking up this bottom, like this bottom line, right? So I'm going mm -hmm. outside the frame. 
and I can crinkle it like the dress, right? So the dress is crinkled uh, vertically. Oh, so look, one. I can also mm -hmm. crinkle it vertically, which is nice, and then lay it in there, which gives it a little bit of um, yeah. realism, right? To what is actually yeah. happening in the photo. And notice too, like I was just pretty sloppy with my glue, and but you know what? I can leave those on there because they're just going to add um, texture. Like I tend not to, I mean, you might be different and, you know, I never like to tell anybody that they're too neat or too messy because I do think these are sort of individ individualistic um, work styles, mm -hmm. right? Just really like who you are. Um, and sometimes when I'm teaching, I'm going a little bit, I mean, I tend to work fast anyway, but I'm going a little bit quickly because I just want to cover more material. Not, yeah. Okay. So, so really we can't do that much more with this right now. Um, but we could add a piece. It's heavy on the, on the, on the bottom. So we could go one. I love this shape right here. We could go one more. Also, we could think a little bit about um, specifying a shape, right? Because I tore that, we could also think about using, um, I know, sorry, my laptop's sliding. We could think about using a blade, uh, an X-Acto blade, a pair of scissors, a tool to, make a shape, right? So we could make, right? So we could cut, like literally cut, because we're working with flowers here, right? We could, right? We could cut, a, cut out a flower, right? So, right, I mean, Ooh. and and because, and we can add it somewhere, you know, and whether or not if, you know, so we can add a flower to the flowers. So I like to play around with the idea of things like being actually in the photographs, but then also trying to make them myself in other ways, whether that's painting, drawing, um, tracing, um scratching right so i try to think okay. about the for the forms or shapes that are in the composition and maybe where else i can add them to give um a feeling of imagination right creativity playfulness right so we can try to put that like look and again because this paper is so malleable i can kind of Wrinkle it, move it. Okay. I don't know then, if, ever, if there anybody's ever told you this. I'm so excited, I could cry. Ah, oh my God, you're so cute. No, nobody. Uh, yes, one one other person told me that they cried about a presentation I did on a book I made, but that was the only. No, I'm just kidding. Crying, yeah, that's the only person who's cried. All right. So, and again, like, so look fun. how pretty even, like, even um, the white, you know, the clear is over the, like, look, just even this. Oh, yes. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry and see what happens when it dries, right? So you, uh, the the paper that's dyed with the tea bag, uh -huh. I noticed it was literally half and half. So you you folded the paper and put half of it hanging into like a tray or something? Yeah, I mean, half must have just been in and half must have been out. <laughs> half in, half out. Yeah, I don't think, I, I don't really remember when I even did that, but I did make tea um, the other week and I made a, every tea is gonna be, different. I made like two English breakfasts and one Irish breakfast. But every tea is going to be like a slightly different color. Mm -hmm. And then don't forget, you could also use just regular tissue paper. You have to be oh. a little careful with tissue paper, though, because um, it can shred. Just like literally just fall apart, right? Oh. Um, it, it disintegrate it, because it's so light, right? 
I mean, I might just put a little bit here. This is seriously so much fun. Oh my God, I feel like a kid. Ah, well, that's good. I'm glad you feel. All right, so. Okay. And if you wanted to do more than one layer, we could also do that. Okay, so all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that there. All right, so it looks like this. Oh, I love what you did at the bottom with the skirt, like the dress, the 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 line down there. Oh, oh wow. yeah, this one, the yes. wrinkle. Yeah, the yes. wrinkle's good. Okay. So I'm gonna put that to the side. So if you want to okay. do one like that, go ahead and um and then let it dry. And let it dry. Yeah. And then you can keep these for later. Yeah. And yeah. And like, I mean, again, if you want to make your own by painting the wax paper or staining it, that's fine. If you want to buy it. Um, oh no, making it. <laughs> or tissue can't make. Okay. And then you can make it in other colors to it. Uh, blue, you know, blue, purple, uh, green, brown, gray, right? Okay, so I'm gonna put the glue away. All right, so let's go. Um, let's go to waxing and wax texture. Okay. And um, do you have a um, scraping tool like a razor blade? Yes. Okay. Let me put this away. So sometimes too, I clean my tools as the same way I kind of clean the lace as I just drop them on the hot plate. And you know, let them wax just melt right off of them rather than like struggling with them. Yeah. Right. And then you can always clean your hot plate by just taking a paper towel and going like this. So you have uh, how many pigment sticks do you have, Erica? Uh, let's see. Eight, nine. Okay. So what colors do you have in the pigment sticks? Um, I have my basics, my primary colors, white, okay. black, yellow, red blue and i think that's green okay and then this small batch of earth tones white a terracotta a tan and a, i think this is black okay so what we're gonna do is the first thing when we have the print right is that um and i think we did this last week is you did what i called those base coats of uh wax medium over the photos right mm -hmm. okay so and again, like if you want me to show you again, like I'm just going to go through my brushes again, right? So I have like my four, I mean, these would be like my four favorite brushes in here. I'm just going to keep it simple. So let's just keep it simple. My, uh, I'll use this one instead of this one. Okay, so these are my four favorite brushes. So I have my four inch hockey, right? I have my three inch short and stubby, right? Stubby. Mm -hmm. I have my like one, one inch hockey. Okay. And then I have my standard. This was, this is just what I call like, you know, this is your most common, your 2.5, right? This is my 2.5, my mi middle size hockey. Okay. okay. So I know like for this photo, there's a couple things that I might in my head think about. And I think a lot about these flowers here. And then I think about the wallpaper. So that's the background. Um, so I think about hand coloring the background or those flowers and having her naked body sort of be separate or different from the background. So one of the things that I might do with the background is hand color it before I even wax. Oh, okay. Okay. So we didn't do that with any of yours, but I'm just putting it out there as a possibility. 
Okay. And then if I was doing it, hand coloring it before the wax, it could look like something like this. Hmm. So I hand colored this with the pastels, right? Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens when I wax this. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna take a medium sized brush and I'm gonna wax it. So it's bleeding, it's bleeding a little bit like the, cause the- The color. Yeah, the, the pastel that I uh, painted it with is not hard, right? So, but I don't see any pink in my paper towel. So I think I'm just good to go, right? So I could just think about waxing this. And I can do these little strokes, right? And I can go up and down or I can switch directions, right? And go horizontal, right? Also, I can do the dab. Remember we talked about the dab? Uh -huh. Right, so these are brush techniques that I like. And the thing about the dab is that I know I'm getting like a wind, I always call it like a window to the photo because I'm not blurring over it. I'm just like putting wax on there. On it, yeah. As if I'm creating like a window. Okay, so that's what it looks like with the wax on it. Oh my God, that's so stunning. Okay, Holy so now if I, if I wanted to make any part of this like sharper, I could use one of my pottery tools and remove some of the wax to go back to the photo, right? So thinning mm -hmm. the wax, thinning the wax brings the photo back to sharpness, right? So it's okay. kind of like mm -hmm. clarity, right? All right, and then I could use a smaller brush. So say I wanted to add some lacy texture because actually like under here is a piece of lace. So this would be a perfect place for me to say, okay, I'm gonna add some wax lace texture. So I lay, I lay this down on here where I want it. I can use my one inch brush, right? And again, I'm gonna kind of dab because I feel like if I, if I brush like this, the wax is just gonna sit on top. It's not gonna go like into it. Ah, uh, okay. So it, and then if I want it to go into the pattern even more, after I apply the wax, I can use a tool uh, like this. Yeah, your wood one. Mm -hmm. Or I can use my palette knife and, and I can into it. scrape on top of it. So this would be like, yeah, I'm, yep. So I'm scraping and the, and the lace is moving a little bit, which is nice because it's kind of giving me like a little wrinkly, right? And yeah, then wrinkle, I also, like a smudge. Yep, Ish. and I'm, but I'm also, it's a little gray because of whatever was on here, but I don't care because I know I can change that, uh, I can change that color of that. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull it up. Oh my gosh. Right, so now I have another, <laughs> now I have another, you're so cute. Now I have another texture there. So I can clean my palette knife right by putting it on the hot plate and then i can blend right any part of this and i can even take uh. that, i can blend so now i'm blending the texture back to the photo so if it's covering up part of the photo that i want to see i can actually just keep going till i take it off or i can just soften the intensity of the texture the other way that I can soften the intensity of the texture would be, of course, to use my what? Your uh, gun. Heat gun, right, which would liquefy it, right? So it would be mm -hmm. a little bit more intense. And you want to be careful with texture if you liquefy it too much because- It'll go away. It'll go away, right? So you want to be, you know, three or four inches from from the top and you're, you know, just blending. So the way you were using your scrape tool, um, uh -huh. if, if you were to put it on your pellet, heat it up a little bit and this come one? back to your paper, uh -huh, uh -huh. come back to your paper just to remove in that certain area because your tool is a little warm. Yeah, it's Could gonna that be a trick. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. that's a good one. Yeah, I mean, you just have to play around with your temperature environment. Right, and like here, like here, this is what I would call a hard edge. 
because it's mm -hmm. texture on smooth paper. There's nothing mm -hmm. else there, but I kind of like it because it's really um, standing up in contrast to smooth mm -hmm. white paper. But if yeah. I wanted it to be more gradual, I could use the heat, you know, and soften that connection where those two, two lines are meeting and the heat, see how I just softened it. And then I could also, yeah. now that it's, I could also extend it, right? Or remove it a little bit. Oh, good. And look, and because of the heat, what else did it do? It went what? Oh, through it. Through. Right. So that's another thing too. But I really like the contrast between like this being mm -hmm. super sharp and this being so smoother. Soft. And this being smoother, where I just smoothed it out, right? And I like these sort of like outside, like the box. Like, I, you know, you just get, for me, like I'm very overdone with the rectangle you know like i've had enough rectangles and squares in my life you know what i mean like i'm not i'm just i'm over it i'm over it all right so look this is that darker color this is the darker color the gray but look uh -huh. it gets see how it's darker at the top yes right so why not just go darker at the top so i could add um you know what i'm gonna grab a stencil i'm gonna add some more flowers hold on a second Loving wow. this. So, so stencils are a little hard to shop for because stencil art is a little like low level art, like it's like below us. But we do love stencils, so you just have to be really creative in how you use them. So, like this one's kind of cool because it's fairly abstract. And what I'm really trying to do is just match the form. So this shape to me is similar to the shape of the magnolia. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm really not going for literacy, but I feel like I could fudge it. Of it. Yeah, yeah, I could fudge it and put it up here. So first thing I'm gonna do is lay down a little bit of extra just wax, right? As the base to go off this top edge. Right, and I'm actually gonna add, I'm gonna add a little bit of wax to this side too, just. Okay, and then I can go, then I can go, and what's nice too is that the, the line, the line of the real branch is sort of following the line that I see in the stencil. So I'm gonna add these just here at the, at the top. And you can move it around to look at it. Yeah, I think this is actually better. All right, so I'm gonna go with the dark gray. So I'm gonna go here. And again, I'm dabbing, I'm not wiping because I don't want it to just, I want it to fill the stencil space. And so, and I'm gonna go more than I probably need. And then I could do a little brushy to kind of blend it. And then maybe somewhere else just put the same color somewhere else in the composition. So mm, just so it's not like the only, okay, so let's see what that looks like. So I can pull it up. So it might be a little heavy handed, right? It might be heavy handed. So what I can think about now is sort of, what do you think, too much? Hey taking back a little bit so it's not so perfect on the yep, edges exactly so it's not so perfect and also not so dark so the first thing i should probably do is fuse it and then because it's hot right now i should probably just wait a second and I'm going to use the same tool so I can wait a second and then I'm going to start to think about like blending it. So just very lightly blend. Right. And you're Ooh, really, yeah, that... right. You're really watching as you're doing this because like every time you touch it, it's making, it's changing it. So you mm -hmm. want to be able to see it evolve right in front of you. And I mean, it's easy, you know, you can go too far pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. I but did that's that to okay. once. Right, but that's okay because you always have your photo underneath. You know, you always have your 
You can always go all the way back, way back if you have to. You have Okay, so I think that this might be okay. What do you think? Better? Oh, yeah. Okay, and then and, I know, go ahead. And the lines aren't so perfect the way you did it when you first took off the stencil. Yeah. Right, you don't want the stencil to be cookie cutter or Perfect. And now you could go. So this is interesting too. Like if I wanted this just to be there, but like maybe just a little bit softer, you can always put another layer of medium over it. Right. Because that's just another like blending layer. Right. It's just a clear. Mm -hmm. Right. And you could put it where you want things to kind of soften mm -hmm. and softening areas makes the eye focus on the areas that you want people to pay attention to, which are the sharp mm -hmm. areas, right? So you can start to really manipulate people's vision about so, what they're looking at, you know, and where their eye is staying in the composition. So I think this is good for now. I mean, I think it's just, as a, I think it has enough wax, right? Yes. So I'm gonna put this one to the side. And let's talk about, um, let's go back to the other one I was working on. And let's talk about using your pig, painting with your pigment sticks. Okay. You ready? And I, I don't know what time, do you, I don't even know where my phone is. It is 10, 13, my time. Okay, so that means it's 1, 15, my time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to go back. Now you have a couple that are ready um, that you did wax on, right? And now you're ready to add either texture or color, right? Did you hear me? Did you freeze? Erica? Are you there? Are you there? Hi. Hi. I don't know where I went, but I'm back. <laughs> so, okay. So do you have any wax on that one right there? Uh, the one you um, mounted to the board. Oh, this one over here? No, the one you have right in front of you. Do you have wax on that? The, the one in front of you on the table. Can you hear me? Okay. Hi. <laughs> All right, well, we'll just be patient. So the one in front of you, do you have wax on it? Can you hear me? I can. can okay, this one, I don't have any wax on it. Okay, so let's wax it. Okay. Okay, so, um, and then we can start thinking about adding colors to all because then you'll have all your pieces waxed, right? Yes. This okay. is the only one that's not waxed. Okay. And that one, I think you definitely want to add some lace to it. And the reason that you want to add lace to it is because she has that awesome like skirt she's holding up. So we want to add fabric there or texture there or something, right? Yes. Okay. So I should lay my my lace first. No, wax first. Wax first. Yep, just the base coat. So we can do it together. So I okay. would use like a bigger brush with the wax medium, you know, like I have a four inch. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, and I would just, you know, go right over her figure with First. the four inch. And then if you want to switch brushes, you can. So then the littler brush could be, you know, for texture or, or, or dabbing. You could try some dabbing yeah, either in the background. Dabbing. Yep, in the background is a good place to dab, yep. I tend not to dab on their naked bodies, but if there's clothing or cloth or a background, you can dab in those places. I see places and I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then after you feel like you have a nice thick wax coating over that photo, then we can talk about adding the lace texture. Oh. What I'm noticing is your your brushes are obviously the right ones. And I bought the ones they gave me are at the art store are these type. Uh-huh. And the oop, and yeah. the strokes are a little different. Okay, so you can correct that with the heat gun. Heat gun, I would heat gun it. Okay. I would hit it with the heat gun. So whenever you have texture that you don't want anymore, you always have two options. One is to blend with heat and two is to scrape. So you always have to just decide which one's gonna work better for you to get the result that you want. And I think for a first coat, my advice is always to just use the heat gun. Okay. Um, and then if that's not smooth enough, then you could use a razor blade. But because you're on a board, you don't have to be limited to um, the, um, pottery tool only on paper are you limited to the pottery tool okay because the pottery tool is very mild really its abilities are like not that you know not that high So are the lines disappearing? Not yet. Okay. And I go straight up and down and over side to side like this. Yep. Yep, better.
How do you think it looks? Okay. Do you have a little razor blade, Erica? Do you have one yes. of these guys? I would use this guy. Oh, and scrape it? Mm hmm Mm, yeah. So if you're if you're scraping, oh, and what I do is I go over the line, and like almost like an X, like over, like over and oh, like I switch directions. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Right, you don't want to just go in one way because then you're gonna make new problems. Right. Okay. And also, if you can I get see. it, if you can get it to go like this. So that you're moving fluid, you're gonna take off any ridges. Also, you don't have to stress that much about this because you're gonna add wax to this. Like, don't drive yourself crazy. Okay. This is a base coat. Okay. Unless this is your final coat that you're thinking needs to be perfectly smooth, please don't like stress no. about it. It was just one area that was like a glump. Okay, like, yeah. So the glump's gotta go for, for sure. So you can de-glump, okay. <laughs> like a new word. I love it. Yeah, we made it up. Let's okay. De -glump thing. Okay. I need to make peace with the wax. I don't know why it makes me nervous. No, it shouldn't make you nervous. Because honestly, too, like you're not you're not married to this coat. Like you're not it's not the end of the day for you guys. It's not the show day, you know. <laughs> we got like time together to work it out. Okay. Okay, I think we can continue now. Okay, so grab their piece of lace and put it, and this is what I do sometimes, like I just kind of like acted really confident because I was in front of you and I was trying to show off, but a lot of times <laughs> when I'm adding lace texture, I might move it around, like lay it down, take a picture of it and move it. Okay. And then um, do that again. Like, uh, where do you want it. the lace? So I'm assuming you want the lace to be coming off of this uh, artist's arm, right? Yeah, on the continuation of here. Yes, in that shape, right. Yeah, let me pin you. Yeah. Um, so if you want to okay. lay it down in a couple places and show me. Um, and don't forget, though, like, it's it's, it's movable. It's, um, you know, you can take it off. You can. I don't know if I'm a fan of this exact. Oh, I, oh, Pat. Yeah, so I don't like that shit, right, no. So you have to flip it so that it's expanding on that shape. So that, that shape is like, so not going against it, but making it bigger. Figure out, yes, better. Yeah, I like that better. So it's going out from that shape or even that the, move it all the way over so that it's radiate. See how it's radiating here and it's like a fan, this part? Move it all, no, this part, on your left. Yeah, this part, no, the part, yeah. Yeah, that should be outside. So it's like a semicircle. It should be moving on the other, on the other side, uh, towards the right. Okay.
Yeah, yeah, over there. Yeah, so you're making like that circle larger. Oh, I see right here. You see it? There she is. But you have to yes. move it around and it has to speak to you. I like that. Then, yep, then go for it. So, so add the wax on there. And not. And on just the pattern of the, the circular or the entire or. I would think just the part, just the part that you're trying to accentuate, just the pattern and a little bit outside the pattern. I would go all the way to the white edge though. I would make it bigger. I always make it bigger than I need it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because you're bigger than you need it because you can always go backwards. You want to make it bigger, bigger than you need it. I'm going to cut this. And you said dab? I would dab or brush lightly, depending on how the fabric starts to react to the wax. Okay. And then I take it off. Oh, I see a spot on you. Yeah, and if you want to scrape it down a little bit, just to see um, what that looks like. What does it look like if you press on it a little bit? You think it needs that? You think it needs to be like flatter in some way? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So you can scrape over it that way. That's just gonna make it's just gonna make the stencil sharper. Right, so pressing on it, it's gonna make it go deeper into the wax. It's gonna make that pattern sharper. Okay. And you don't, and you don't have to do it uh, all over, just like maybe a, a little bit or around the edges or, Oh, okay. It's not mandatory. It just really does change, I think, the feeling of the stencil from being like cookie cutter perfect to being like looser. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. I mean, you'll know as you do it more which you prefer, but I even like it to vary, right? Between, like, I like it to have both, like loose and tight. Right, and I also like it to be thick and thin, right? I don't like it just like one way. Okay, I pull off now. Yep. Is it working for you? <laughs> it actually looks a little bit like snakeskin. Oh I'll yeah. In a second. Ah. 
Yeah. This is so fucking awesome. Uh, oh my gosh. This literally looks like snakeskin. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Oh yeah, beautiful. In that corner. Oh my God, yeah, beautiful. Okay, so because your image is so black and white, do you feel like you want that pattern to be black? Or do you want it to be a color? I don't know. Not like, do you want black? Okay. So, do you have a black pigment stick? Yes. Okay. So, you're going to get the black pigment stick. Also, do you feel like you need to scrape it back in any way or in a couple spaces? Ooh, maybe I should let this dry. Yeah. Maybe. And maybe like fuse it. Uh, yeah. Let it cool for a second. Maybe fuse it a hair so that it feels like it's totally connected to the panel, like it's not going to fall off. Like, you know, you know, you want to make sure that's not gonna like flake off, you know what I mean? Flake off mm -hmm. or fall off. Yeah, there's a few spaces that it feels like it's gonna. Right, so if it off. looks like it's right. So if it looks like if it's half on there or sitting on the edge, you want to secure those spaces. Right? So I hit it with the gun or yep, maybe hit it with, with the, the gun. The, yep, hit it with the gun, exactly. So, right, so you're starting to sort of see maybe like what your needs are and what tool you need to achieve your goal, right? So, you know, you're gonna have visual goals. You're like, oh, I want it to look like this. I want it to do this. I want it to do this. What do I do? How do I get it to do what I want it to do, right? Mm -hmm. So you're learning like a whole new skill set, different than photography, but similar, like in a, you know, I always talk similar in ways. I think I need to take it off right here. I think that's good. I think that's good. <laughs> okay, so let me do something similar to what you did. So I'm going to go like, uh, wait, let me, I'm just going to go, I'm going to add. Okay, so I'm going to add this um, lace like you added lace, but for me i'm going to have it like shooting out of her because her hand is here and she does not actually even wear it i'm just going to have it like coming off of her body. Um, oh, I see right here. In the right, so it's going to be more like it's like a skirt for her. Right, so it's going to be in the lower portion. Okay, so I'm going to get this texture on here. So I'm just going to do this to kind of like mirror like what you did a little bit. And I'm going to, okay. And I'll scrape it like you did, you know, kind of, and wait for it to cool. You always want to wait for it to cool before you start pulling it up, right? If you pull it up too quick, of course, you know, you're not. Okay. I added a corner. Okay, so mine turned out again, mine's a little bit gray, right? So here it is down here though. So you're gonna use a black. Do you have like a, if you don't wanna use straight black because you feel like it's too harsh, you could use your wax paper or um, a paper plate or a regular plate and you can blend your pigment sticks, right? Because Pigment sticks are really nice and oily. So you can blend the pigment sticks. So you can take a piece of wax paper like this. If you have white, you can put your white out, right? So you see how I'm putting the paints on the, mm -hmm. and then this will become your painter's palette. Ooh, okay. 
Now, I sometimes go backwards and forwards with how I feel about black. So sometimes I might like like uh, very dark gray so, or, or Payne's gray, which is actually black and blue and maybe a little bit of medium gray mixed together. So you could mm -hmm. also do like that. You could do a mixture of those. Um, you could do dark blue. You could also do brown and black and white, right? To make like a brownie black, right? Or if you wanted to do like a purpley black, you could do that too. Like, so, you know, again, like you can really, do you see how I'm like, tint, Ooh, look how pretty, I just did yeah. purple. I mean, so whatever dark color you want to use, you can really, it does not have to be black. Just because your undertone color is black, you do not have to use black as your darkest shading color okay. because it, it tends to be kind of boring. I mean, mm -hmm. black is black. There's like nothing There's else no, to it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So some people really like it and some people don't. So everybody kind of has their own. Maybe like this dark, dark green, a little bit of it. Sure. I mean, whatever color speaks to you, I'm going to go. I like this. I made like a blue. Mm like a dark, like a plummy, um, dark color. So again, you can go, this is my darkest shade of it along with the purple. Now you can use your finger. I like to use my finger, but you can just start rubbing um, the paint from the palette, right? Directly like, onto the pattern. And <clears throat> what's gonna happen is it's gonna, um, it's either gonna sit on the center of the pattern or you're going to be able to like push it down in between the lines. So there's two things that could be happening for you, right? So it's either going to go like on it or in it, in between. The oh, lines. yeah. Okay. Now, did you happen to buy the extender stick? Extender stick. Extender stick. So mm -hmm. this is, this is because these pigment, these pigment sticks are made with beeswax paint pigment and a little bit of oil the extender stick is made just of the oils and the wax so it just kind of thins them out if you don't have extender oh. stick you could also use coconut butter like or coconut right. from the kitchen or mm -hmm. even uh, a little bit of vegetable oil oh i have that if you want to make this just a tad bit thinner or maybe move a little bit easier, right? So it's kind okay. of like um, just getting a little bit more out of it by adding a little bit more like uh, ex uh, extension, like uh, flexibility. So either coconut oil or- Well, you can either um, buy, right? I'll, you can either buy the RNF extender stick, which looks like this, right? But what mm -hmm. does this look like? This kind of looks like a big chapstick yeah right so it's like oily and do you see how it just like takes the paint Thins and it, it takes out it, well it makes yeah. it more translucent and it makes it thinner so mm -hmm. that it goes farther right and then so you can also go ahead coconut oil or vegetable oil yes yeah, so you can also use coconut oil or vegetable oil but just not a lot like you very know, you, little yeah because you want it to dry and you don't want it to get like bug you know you just just a little bit. Okay. I'll use a Q-tip to. Uh, a Q-tip? Yeah, just to be, to, to pour it. So it's very oh, little. Oh yeah, that's fine. Or you could just use your finger, just put it in a little cup and put it on your finger. And then, so, and then you can go like right over the pattern. So it should start to look like this. <gasps> that purple is beautiful. Oh my gosh. So I've just been Holy blending, cow. right. I've just been blending like the purple and the Payne's gray, which is like, and the white, right. And I've been blending it on the piece and on the paper. So it's kind of just like, like blending all over. And then I can always put dark, I can layer it, right? So I can put, I can put the white down then put the dark on top of it. And then also you can paint any other part of the photo with this too. So like, 
See, look, I can go back into these flowers. Remember I was talking about painting these flowers? Or the empty space, like, so you can paint right on the wax, right? So these, right? So I painted a little bit in the background, but I've just kind of stuck with this one color. Now, if you wanted to be pretty aggressive with it, you could take the actual stick itself and rub it right mm -hmm. on the wax in there and then use a paper towel to blend. Dad, okay. Okay, so let me watch you paint. I'm gonna switch you to the pen. And... Uh, Go ahead. I was trying to think of my elementary school mixing colors, what two colors make what color. <laughs> Uh, well, red, red and blue make purple, yellow and blue make green, uh, red and yellow make orange. So what color do you have blues and black? Blue, black, if you want to do, black is a dominant color. So if you want to do mm -hmm. blue, black, you have to do blue. Don't, don't add the blue to the black. Add the black to the blue. Okay. Because I ended up making, it looks like a gray. It's very dull. It doesn't have like a, uh. So add some blue to it or add purple to it. And if you want to make purple, you have to use your red and uh, blue together to make a purple. Also, some of your sticks are um, not R and F sticks, right? So yeah. are half. So you'll notice a huge difference between the R and F sticks and the Stenlier sticks. Mm -hmm. Stenlier sticks are very hard. Yeah, I noticed that already. The ones I ordered that are coming tonight or RNF. Yeah, so the RNFs are like juicy, like juice, juicy, like juicy. Yeah. Couture, couture. Like um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, like ripe fruit, right? So they're like very um voluptuous, you know, have a lot to offer. Whereas the other ones, um, not so much. <laughs> not so much. They're just very drier, but they're also just used for really like drawing and like figurative or, or traditional um, painting and drawing, not as much as the, whereas the pigment sticks, the RNF and the encaustic sticks are really, those pigment sticks are really meant to mix with the waxes and go over another texture and blend, right? And sort of yeah. have this different, um, they just have a different job, right? So it's like, kind of like we all have our jobs, things we're good at. I really see the difference between the two. Yeah. It's night and day. Yeah. So what you might only be able to do with the Senlier sticks is really kind of like draw a line and then take a paper towel with a lot of oil or extender and then rub it. You're not going to get it to be able to rub out like on its own. It just won't, won't go. That's a big difference. Wow. Because this is what I came, it's like a blue. Okay, yeah, go for it. Now put it on your pattern. See see how you're, see, so start painting your, your wax piece a little bit. See how you like that. And again, you can use your finger. You could use a paintbrush, right? You can put the stick directly. You can put the stick directly onto the surface. And you're, you're, you're painting a three-dimensional space, right? So you've got to think about sort of like, how is that working out for you? Like, um, are you going on the top of the surface? Are you going around it? I'm going on top of it. Okay, so that suggests like a raised surface. Mm -hmm. So that would mean that it's coming forward, right? And out of the picture plane. Ooh, I can see I'm gonna need a lot. <laughs> Say what? I can see that I'm gonna need a lot. A lot of paint. Of paint, yeah. Yeah. 
Right, because you probably put a lot of texture on there. Mm hmm Oh, that's too bright. That's okay. Really like it. You like it? Can you oh. hold it up? Can you hold it up and let me see? So I can see what's happening. Okay, so it's green. Mm hmm Okay, pretty. Not what I wanted, but I that I like the way I'm not I'm just going with it. I'm not trying yeah, do to do it. <laughs> no, do it. I mean you're if you're just you're learning, you know, you're processing. So you're learning how to color color the wax. Right? Yes. I can't wait for those sticks to come tonight. How about well, right. And then new materials, you're like, oh my God, like, let me try, uh, like, you know, but then there's like, you're like, wait, what do I do first? And I mean, and again, you can do this in layers, like you can layer wax back over this, right? You can, um, all these orange sticks are so much better. Holy yeah, they God. move that the other ones don't move. They're very stiff. No. Right. And I'm gonna get, that's what I forgot. It was a paper towel. Yeah, you gotta have the paper towel for the blending. Because, yeah, you can only blend so far with your finger, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to want to do more blending than that. Let me try. I should have done this. Yeah. And you want to start, you sort of want to think about like your goal. Like, you know, what is your goal here? Are you, are you, is just making her skirt bigger? Are you creating an environment for her? Like what, it's nice to kind of have, are you creating a fantasy world? It, I mean, I'm assuming you're just elaborating on her clothing mm -hmm. and kind of like dressing her up, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So um, I hate to say this, but it's already one, oh my God, it's like 155. So I'm gonna head out in about 10 minutes, but do you, do you want, how can I help you? Do you wanna just paint? Do you wanna just do your own thing? Like what? Yeah, I'm gonna, so after I do this, um, so I can, you can still add other things to it. Yeah, so you you can, and even now, like if you wanna just leave the painting of that texture to later, but maybe you wanna like add another layer of wax. Some people even add like two or three layers of medium, right? So, and also because now you had a surface and then you have a, a texture on it. So mm -hmm. you have two different levels. Maybe you wanted to level out, uh, you know, so you could build up wax around the texture so that they're, instead of being like this and this, they're like this, right? So instead mm -hmm. of one being right, they could be even. You can always add more wax medium. And one other thing I wanted to show you today, if you're gonna, are you gonna paint more today? Yes, I'm gonna sit here and um, make my own colors out of these. Okay, so I wanna give you one more little food for thought thing. Okay. 
Okay, and that is, is that if you take your wax medium on your hot plate like this, right? And you make a little puddle, right? Of wax medium, mm -hmm. you can put your pigment stick in the wax. Yes. Did you see what I just did? Yes. Okay, and then you can paint with it. So you can take your brush and your wax medium. If you add more wax medium, what's that going to do to the paint? It's going to make it what? Uh, trend, clearer. Yes. Very good, girl. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> it's going to make it more translucent and clearer, right? So it's kind of like lacy and you can kind of see through it, right? Now you can mix here too. So I have blue there now, but if I wanted to make it, you know, purpley, I can just put the purple right in there on the hot plate. I can mm. add more wax. You can also paint with these pigment sticks, okay? So you can make them um, almost like translucent, right? And you can paint with them, right? You can paint with wow. them. You can put them on as glazes, like over, oh, even over the stencils that you just made, right? And then you can heat them right fuse them and you could decide to scrape them back a little bit too right now one more thing just to totally blow your mind <laughs> you can also fuse the pigment sticks into the wax on the actual artwork so here we just added it right mm -hmm. but if i wanted to do like um if I wanted to do a heavy, I'm just gonna do this. I could take the pigment stick directly to the wax, you know, in fairly painterly way by actually just brush, you know, like wiping it on here. Mm -hmm. Like literally painting directly with the pigment stick onto the wax. And then I can fuse this in there also. So I could either like blend it a little bit right with the paper towel Ooh, and then yeah. i can fuse it Ooh, so that i means, love that right so this means i'm making i'll show you it's a different type of texture but it's also instantly drying it so i don't have to wait for the oiliness to dry i have to wait i can't move it right this second but it just gives it like a totally different look oh wow right Oh my goodness, that's so amazing. Okay, so I just gave you, and you can rewatch this video too, but, and I know I just squished a lot of information into like the last five minutes. So we talked about making texture with the uh, encaustic medium, right? Then we talked about painting on that with the pigment sticks and blending the pigment sticks. Then you can also blend the pigment sticks into the wax medium mm -hmm. and then paint with it in, like you're making your own colored wax, right? So it can go right in here with the wax medium, it. right? Right? Yes. Okay, Yay! so I can, right, so I can paint with this and then like, look how pretty this color is. Oh my gosh. Right? Right, so that's like so beautiful. So like, yeah, we gotta put some of that in there. And then you can go ahead and put this over you know, on top of the stencil layer you already did, or um, you can put it someplace else, right? And then you can fuse it, right? So you can fuse that either the wax with the color in it, or you can fuse the pigment stick directly onto the paper, the piece. Oh my. Oh, I'm clapping. Okay. I'm clapping. Okay, I know it's overwhelming, but you should just play. And I mean, and I'm sure you're gonna have questions, but I'm gonna see you uh, tomorrow, right? And no. I will send you this recording. Um, I'll send you this recording probably around dinner time tonight in a couple okay. of hours. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I think what I need to do is order those brushes you have because I'm noticing it's 
from how from the moment you put it out of the wax to the paper it's huge it, my brush is, uh, maybe your same. brushes are too short and they're not holding the thing about the hockey brushes is that they get a lot of wax in them like they mm. they absorb they pick up a lot of wax is okay. that what you mean? Do you feel like you're, there's not enough wax in your brush? No, it makes it too, as soon as I, the first um, application is very blob-ish. Mm -hmm. It's too blobby. Oh, maybe like you're a big not. Chunk. Okay, so maybe you need to tap the brush on the side of the tin. Like when you're, okay. lifting, when you're lifting the brush out, wait, watch me. When you're lifting the brush out, tap it here mm -hmm. and then try brushing. Okay. But also I'll try the that. hockey brush. I mean, I love the hockey brushes. Um, I love them. I think they're amazing. Yeah. Um, I'll give this a try, but I think it's the brush. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, well, right. But you're gonna you're gonna have to try, it's like trying clothes on or trying mm -hmm. shoes on. I mean, you're gonna have to try you know Multiples. some different techniques yeah you're gonna have to try stuff before you know exactly what's working for you and what's my favorite right and and that's just sort of part of gaining confidence and experience um with the medium itself right and the equipment right no you're right okay all right so i'm gonna run i have to go i have to eat i gotta go to the bathroom me too okay 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 i know i've been holding it for so long Okay, so I will see you tomorrow and uh, have a great day. Have a, have a great day, Erica. Thank you, and we're, I really, really, I know tomorrow's gonna be a lot of people on here. I just really wanna thank you. Oh, thank you. For giving, not just me, but other artists to scribble. Like oh. not what we are taught when we're little, like stay inside the lines. Uh -huh. Literally color outside of the lines because you can create something better than what you started oh, with. Oh, thank, so so thank you much. so much. Thank you. I'm so, I'm so, I'm going to be so happy you're going to be with me tomorrow as I hit like the large group and everything. But um, yes, I'm here for you and I am happy to encourage you and support you in your, in your ex exploration, in Yay. your process. Yay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Have a thank beautiful you. day. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Good luck. To